Thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Artbeat Studios. Artbeat specializes in printing high quality metal, canvas, and acrylic prints. Make sure to check out the link down in the description if you're a photographer that wants to print your work. What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you how I take an otherwise average photo edit and turn it into something that I think is a little bit more. There's not really one particular concept I'm gonna focus on in this video, and I'm not gonna show you every single step and every how-to of every detail along the way, but I am gonna show you just a bunch of different tricks that I can use to help really elevate my image. Um, hopefully there's gonna be some things that will help you to improve your personal photography, some things you can take away yourself. Um, so we're going to jump right in there. My name is Austin James Jackson. By the way, if you're new here, um, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you guys are interested in improving your photography. I don't want to waste any more time. Let's go ahead and jump right in there. This is the image that I'm working with here. You can see I've got it open here in Lightroom. I'll close these boxes down just to make it a little bit bigger. And I've applied some basic edits on here. Now, in theory, this photo should be a lot better than it is. You know, I've got interesting clouds. I've got nice light on the mountain, um, but it's just pretty average, honestly. It, it doesn't really do much for me. Um, and I, there's a few tricks I think that I can make in order to really improve the image. You can see I've already done some basic edits here, um, but it really I've, I've not done a whole lot. Now, one thing that you'll notice, um, I edited this a while ago. I used the contrast slider. I actually want to take that off. I don't want to use that contrast slider. I'm going to add that uh, with the tone. I'm going to add contrast rather with a tone curve, which is going to be a little more interesting. Um, I recently, probably in the last few weeks here, have switched over. I quit using the contrast slider and I just use the tone curve now. I used to use them both, but I'm just finding the tone curve to work a little bit better and you can do it all in the tone curve. Now, what I want to do is create an S curve first. That's going to be way too much contrast, but that is okay. Now, one thing that you will see a lot of photographers make the mistake of is they'll add contrast like this and call it good. Problem is you have so much dark in your image that is so uninteresting over here, and you could bring the shadows up, but as you can see, I'm already at plus 100, so I'm maxed out on the shadows. But what I want to do instead of bringing the shadows up, what will actually look a little bit better, is if I go in and I grab the very bottom of this curve, I've showed this in many of my recent videos, and bring that up. Now, if you go too far, you give your photo this like nice matte look that you don't want. Um, so we don't want to go too terribly far. But I do want to go to like maybe 12 or 15 looks good here. You can toggle the before and after. Now we're in the right ballpark. I think that's looking pretty good. Now, this particular photo is a focus stack. I'll briefly show you how I go about doing that. Uh, the reason why I know that is when I zoom in, I've got a sharp mountain here, but I have a blurry foreground, which is kind of boring. And you can see in this photo here, we've got a sharp foreground. Now, before I focus stack these, I want to make sure I copy and paste the settings so the edit is exactly identical. So I'm going to hit Command C. Um, you can ch check all, or I'm just going to do these settings because they're already what I have. I'm going to press copy, click on the other photo, and I'm going to Control V, which pastes, or Command V on a Mac. That's Control V on a PC. Now I've got my images ready to roll here. I'm going to bring these into Photoshop to do a focus stack and do a few uh, advanced editing things that I'm not going to be able to do here uh, in Lightroom. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to click on these photos, shift click to grab them both. Then I'm going to control click on a Mac or right click on a PC, or I guess right click on a Mac if you want as well. Then I'm going to go to edit in and I'm going to open as layers in Photoshop. That's going to allow me to do this focus stack. I'm going to let that load out here into Photoshop where we'll be able to do the focus stack. We're going to do some warping. We're going to do a lot of other things. Even if you're not a Photoshop user, I think it's worth watching this because it will show you the potential that you can do in Photoshop. And I'm not going to talk about exactly how to do everything that I'm doing, but I'm just going to show you how to do it. If you want more advanced or longer tutorial on a lot of these things like warping or focus stacking, I'll link other videos that I have on my channel that are dedicated to those particular concepts. So now that we've got our image open here, into Photoshop. First thing that we want to do with the focus stack, select both layers. Uh, I'm going to shift click. We're going to go to edit. We're going to go to auto align layers, select auto and hit OK. That just basically fixes any miss, slight misalignment there might have been because of focusing or you bump the tripod or whatever. Now they should be perfectly aligned. You can see when I toggle that they are. Now you want to zoom in, find out which one is the background, which one is the foreground. This image that I'm looking at right here is the BG for background, which means the other one is the FG for foreground. Now I'll zoom in here. 
you can see the foreground is much sharper here. So I want to do my best to make a good selection of our foreground here. Now, normally I wouldn't do it this way, but I'm going to give it a go on this image. Uh, I'm going to do a focus stack here and I'm going to do it by using the quick selection tool. Normally I would use a brush, but because we uh, essentially we have this rock shelf here, that's a different color. So I can just go ahead and grab that rock, which I think will be able to be selected really well as opposed to the background because there is such high contrast on the edge there. So I can just go through, click and drag here, make your brush a little bigger if you want. And if I was doing this not for the video, I might spend a little bit more time doing this and I might go back and refine it later. Um, but I just want to grab a good selection. Again, you can always use the brush tool if you're finding that this isn't working well for you. Generally, you're not going to want to use this tool for a focus stack because you usually don't have like a shelf where you need to make a perfect selection there to do the focus stack. Usually it's going to be something like you have flowers in the foreground that lead into a background. So it's more of a gradient focus stack that you want to do as opposed to this, which is like a hard edge focus stack. So I can go in here. Find the edges as much as you like or as little as you like. And I might go back in with my brush and paint over that in a second. I can go ahead and click on my BG, my background, and I can apply that as a layer mask. And of course, I want to invert the mask by using Command I. That's going to make it so we have the foreground in focus. Now, everything in my image should be in good focus. You can, of course, toggle this and go in, make adjustments. If you hold shift and click on this layer here, you can see it'll show you uh, what it looks like without the layer mask. So if, like you can see, this is actually sharper here without the layer mask. I might go in with my brush and make my brush a lot smaller here. I'm gonna go to 100% opacity. And oops, we wanna make sure we're painting white. I just hit X to flip it over. Paint white through there, that looks good. Now we can toggle through here. You can see we need to paint black in here and oops make sure you have black and you can go through and be as accurate or inaccurate as you like but I'm pretty happy with how that edge looks it's looking pretty much fine for my personal taste uh, we might want to paint some black in here as well and we'll call that good. I don't want to do this forever. So uh, we'll call that good. So now you can see we have this nice, uh, totally in sharp image. So that's going to be the first thing that's going to help us. The next thing before I do any crazy edits, there's a lot of things that are wrong with this photo that I'm going to adjust. But the next thing I want to do a little bit of a warp. When I was out here in the field, this mountain looked absolutely incredible, crazy big. Because I've used a really wide angle, I believe a 14 millimeter lens, it's really kind of flattened that mountain out. Usually with a wide angle lens, when you aim at something like this mountain, for example, you put it in the center of the frame, it kind of makes it short and fat. So it loses a lot of the height that it had. I want to do a little bit of a warp. I also want to warp this uh, foreground to kind of make that more interesting as well. So I'm going to go command uh, alt option, which is one key shift and E that's going to merge all visible. Now I have one layer on the top here that I can do practically whatever I want with. Um, I'm going to go in and hit command T then control click. That is going to bring up the warp dialogue here. Now warping is pretty fun. Like I said, I'll link a video where you can learn all about warping um, and learn all the tricks and the, the tricks of the trade, I guess we'll say. Uh, but in this video, I'm just going to briefly show you how I would warp this image. So I would start by dragging around. I think on the foreground here, I don't need all this like boring rock, but I do want this green, uh, what is this, like lichen or something like that. One of Somebody on this channel who knows more about nature. Uh, and I know a lot about nature, but I don't know what that is called. I don't know a lot about plants and rocks. Uh, so I'm going to drag that down. I like having this exit a little bit lower. And then I kind of want to squash the middle of this frame. The reason being when I was here, I remember this lake being tiny compared to this mountain, but the lake looks pretty major compared to the mountain. So I can actually squeeze in right here. This is just going to kind of reduce the size of that foreground, which is uninteresting because it's in the shadows. It's dark. It's boring. You, of course, want to make sure that you 
level everything out and make things look level. And then I like to drag, to make this mountain taller, I like to just drag up from like right here. Now I can make that mountain look a little bit more major. And I've squashed this foreground, I think, a little bit too much. So we'll bring it back just a hair. Somewhere about in there. You can also, yeah, if you want to make the mountain look a little skinnier, move things around. Now I understand this technique right here is not for everybody because you are, yes, changing the image. One thing that I always say to people that are really against doing a warp like this is yes, I probably have a little bit more creative freedom, but this is how I remember it in the field because like I mentioned with that wide angle lens, it really makes that mountain look pretty crummy. So by doing this, it, it helps to bring back kind of what I remembered in the field is this epic, epic mountain. Um, probably like that. Let's go ahead and hit enter and then we'll toggle. See what that does. I always toggle everything, always toggle. There's no reason not to toggle just to see the before and after. So before, and after, I'll zoom in here, there's after, before, after, before, after. So we made the mountain substantially more impressive in my opinion. Um, and I'm pretty happy with that. We've also kind of made the clouds a little bit more, a uh, little bit more, I, I don't even know the word for it, but th there's more clouds in the image, they're larger. So it looks nice. Now that's looking pretty good. So the other thing that I really don't like about this image is you'll notice the difference in a color between the mountain here and the sunlight catching over here. That should all be the same color. It's all the same sunlight hitting all the same kind of rock. I don't know why it's a different color, but it is. Maybe it was being diffused by a cloud or whatever. I want to fix that. And it's actually not too bad to fix. And you can check to see if it's the same color by hitting I, bringing up your eyedropper tool bring up the color picker so you can see it as you go through you'll notice as i click here we're hovering between we're pretty much right on orange as i click and drag around here uh, and i'm clicking and dragging and that's it's adjusting the color there if i drag over here you can see we're a bit more yellow in most spots like up here is substantially more yellow so we need to make this color more red or make this color more yellow. I think I wanna make this one more red, which is really easy to do. We're gonna go ahead and create a new hue saturation here. I'm gonna go down to reds. You can also, once you select a color, click the eyedropper and select this color, just like that. Now we can drag this over. I'm gonna drag it towards red. Obviously you can go way too far with this. You can uh, turn your photo into avatar if you want, whatever you wanna do here. I just wanna do it just a hair maybe like 10 points, which is too much, but I'm gonna work this in now. So what I'm gonna do is hit Command I to inverse that layer. I'm gonna go in with my brush tool, change it to white. I'm gonna drop the opacity to 15%, let's say about 15%. Make sure your feather is at zero or hardness is zero, which makes the feather 100. Then you can go in and start painting this effect in. You can see it works in pretty quickly. Maybe even just like that. And you can also go in, one thing I feel like is that the lightness needs to be decreased because it's way brighter. So maybe I'll bring that lightness down. And maybe I'll bring, I'll adjust the hue just slightly more. I think that's looking pretty good. We can go in with like a luminosity mask and reduce the brightness if we wanted to match it up with the mountain. I think we want to do that. Let's go ahead, grab our luminosity mask panel here. This is the free TK panel, great panel. If you don't have a luminosity mask panel or don't know how to use it, I'll link a video for that. If you do know how to use, if you do know how to use luminosity masks, you're going to go in. Probably luminosity two is going to work well. I'm just going to grab a curve here and. We'll drop that. And at the same time, we need to also drop the saturation. Now we don't want that luminosity mask to affect the whole image. We'll go ahead and throw a folder on that or a group. Then I can put it inside the group and create a layer mask. Now I can just paint, I'm gonna go with 100% opacity here. I hit zero on the keyboard. And I'm just gonna paint that in, oh, I'm sorry. You're gonna inverse, command I to inverse then you're gonna paint with white. Now what I just did is a very, very subtle change. You probably don't notice it very much. Um, I'm gonna go back and reduce the saturation a little bit more, but it does make a difference. It all adds up. It, it now makes it so that when I look at this, add a hole, 
and I'll toggle these two layers. You can see before and after. It matches up now with this mountain, I think, a little bit better, which helps to kind of sell the realism look of the image. Now, when we're talking about color, the other th adjustment that I really need to make, you'll see here in the sky, our sky is different shades. Again, whether it was clouds, who knows what the reasoning was, but it's different shades. And again, I will prove it to you if you don't believe me. Grab my eyedropper tool. Grab this. Make sure I'm not selected on... I need to create... Uh, I need to create a new layer here. If you're selected on the layer mask with the eyedropper tool, it's just going to give you black and white, which is not what you want. So click on something other than the layer mask. Now you can go back in. So you'll see up here, we're right about in here. Now if I click over here, you'll notice the it's a little bit lighter as I click around. It's different. Notice how this is darker and a little bit more saturated almost. And this is lighter. Now, of course, the sunlight is coming from over here, so it matches up a little well. But like you can see here, this is a deeper blue than this. As you watch this bar right here. So it is a different color. Again, let's fix it. We're going to do the same exact thing. Super easy. Uh, hue saturation. Really, the hardest part about fixing this is just being able to have the eye to see that it needs to be fixed. We'll go in. We'll grab the cyans, and we're probably just going to use the color sample again you can't when you're on the master here your color sample will be grayed out you have to select a color first but i could select like yellows and then use the color picker tool and i can select up here and it'll change it to blues so that's not a big deal essentially the figure out what color of the sky what color you want the sky to be i like this color in the middle so i want to match everything to the middle first thing i want to match this little top right third because that one is a little bit too cyan so i'm just going to drag it over a little bit somewhere about in there looks good i'm going to command i to invert that mask then i'm going to go in and i'm going to paint with a white over this area here now, I probably don't want 100% because as you can see, it works in too quickly. So we'll go Command Z. Why don't we drop this down to 20% here and then we can start clicking and working it in. And when you notice that nothing is happening, it's because you are on black. Flip it over to white. Now you'll notice it's starting to happen. You'll notice once you start working it in too much, like in here, it's getting a little too like purpley. So I'll just go in, flip to the black brush, and then I'll just click through there again. I think that's looking a little bit better. Maybe we'll increase the lightness and the saturation just a touch. Again, we just want to match it, make it look about the same. You can see that's already looking much better. Now, when I toggle this, you can probably see that it does make a difference. We're too teal there, and now we are a little bit better on the blue. That's looking pretty good and I'm I'm okay with the blue being a little different over here because it does seem to be the same hue it just is different in lightness which is totally fine because we have uh, the sunlight is coming from over here. Now the next thing that I want to do is these clouds are not looking good. I want to help to maybe fix that a little bit. Let's grab a luminosity mask. We'll do a lights to selection. We'll grab a curve and we'll just drag this down. I just want to drag it down a bit. Let's toggle that before and after. I think that's looking decent. And I might want to just go in and paint this effect in. So when you already have a layer mask on a layer, if you want to create another one, you can't just do this and have another one that doesn't work. You need to create a group, drag this into the group then you can create the layer mask. So I'm going to hold Alt when I create it so it creates a totally black layer mask. And then I'm going to flip this to white. Then I'm just going to start painting this in to get some of that color back. I'm still not like super crazy and happy with how the clouds look in here. But I'm a, I am like it a little bit better now. And you can also go in if you wanted to, like, one thing that I might do on this image is do a little mid-tone contrast. I think that'll help the clouds a little bit. And mid-tone contrast is super easy. Some photographers try and make it sound like it's a really difficult technique. Simply just make a mid-tones mask. Like, usually, for me, I'm going to go mid-tones too. You'll grab a curve, and you'll just create an S-curve. 
Oh, and you're going to drag this out of the group so that it actually applies to everything. Now, when you do this, some areas of your image are going to start to look a little overcooked. But again, that's why you create another group. Drop this in the group. I'm going to Alt and click on the layer mask to create a black layer mask. And then I'm just going to paint this in again. So I was I liked what it did to the clouds up here. So I'm going to click and bring all that in. If you're finding that you're coloring over the edges, simply just grab the quick selection tool, click and drag right here. I'm going to grab your brush tool again, grab black, and then go 100% opacity. You can click and keep that out. That'll make sure that edge stays nice and hard, which is what we want. Oops. And I think, yeah, I like, I like what that did up there. Didn't do a lot, but it did a little. It actually made a pretty big difference. Now, I'm starting to get pretty happy with where this image is at. I might just add a quick Orton effect just so I get a little bit more glow on the edge over here. To do an Orton effect, I'm going to go Command, Alt, Option, Shift, and E, Merge All Visible. We're going to go to Gaussian Blur. And honestly, uh, normally on these videos, I like to actually find the filter, go Filter, Blur. But uh, more often than not, I just go up to Help and I type what I'm looking for because it is so much faster than me browsing the menu. That's probably a bad habit, but that's how I do it. And I'll just be honest with you guys because if you do that, there's no shame. So 50 pixels for the radius for this. We're going to hide that layer. I'm going to grab another luminosity mask. Let's do a Lights 2. We're going to click this apply button, which should apply it to the layer here. Now you can see this is our Orton effect. Go to soft light. You can toggle it. One thing that I generally like to do is warm it up and brighten it as well. So you can go ahead, go to exposure, hit the drop down arrow, increase the exposure, just a hair. Then we're going to go to color balance drop down arrow once again, and we'll warm it up just a little bit. Now you can see before and after. So the Orton effect added a nice little glow on the side there, and I think that's looking pretty good. I might go in now. I want to make one more adjustment to the color of the blues in the image, and to do that, I actually am going to merge all visible again, so Command, Alt, Option, Shift, and E. We're going to go to Filter. We're going to go to camera raw filter. The reason why I'm doing this instead of using the hue saturation is because I want to use this new um, point color. Actually, I'm going to use the mixer, but I do like the way that the mixer adds luminance to the colors a lot better than the hue saturation uh, adjustment does. And that's essentially what I want to do. I want to add luminance to the blues to brighten them up. That will help my image a lot, I think. Somewhere about in there. We can go to hue and adjust the aquas. You'll notice this is affecting just this area in here, which is the area we fixed, but maybe we didn't fix it quite enough, but we can make up for it right there. I also want to go in and grab the luminance of the oranges. Give it a little bit of pop there. Decrease the saturation of the oranges just a hair. And I think that's looking pretty good. We could also maybe bring up the luminance of the greens. It's not going to do a whole lot. We're actually not going to do that. That's looking pretty good. Now I would go ahead and hit OK. There's two more things that I like to do to all my images. The first one is this pop filter. Command, Alt, Option, Shift, and E to merge a new visible layer. I know there's definitely a lot better non-destructive ways to edit your photos. This is just the quick and easy, quick and dirty way to do it. Um, and I'm going to create a pop filter on this. Now I have an action for this. I have other YouTube videos you can look at to see how this is done. Essentially, all this is is an unsharp mask. Mount 30% radius 40 pixels threshold zero. I'm going to go ahead and hit play on that action. That's going to apply it. You'll see this just kind of adds like some micro contrast, which comes in far too strong. You want to make sure you're not creating these like dark edges. So you just reduce this down. Usually I'm at about 30 to 40% maybe sometimes lower, just like that. Add a little micro contrast there. And now last but not least, I like to put on my signature custom vignette. So I grab the ellipse selection or circle selector tool, draw a circle on my image. I go to the play button here and I hit vignette. Again, I've got videos on this. I'll link if you want to know how to create this action. Then I'll go in. I want to change this blend mode to soft light here. I've got uh, the darken layer on soft light, the lighten one on overlay. 
I like to mess with the darken layer first, so I hit Command T. I drag out from the edges, and then I go Control Click and I warp. So now I can just drag in and really make this fit the photo exactly how I want. Now I want to keep it away from over here. I do not want to darken that brighter area around uh, where the sun is coming in. But I do want to darken the bottom a little bit. Somewhere like in there is looking pretty good for me, I think. Maybe drag this down. Yeah, let's go like right in there. And I think that's looking pretty good. And you can go ahead and toggle and adjust your brighten layer here in the center if it's too bright or not bright enough. Uh, I'm going to drop it just a hair, 20%. Now that's looking pretty good. Now there's a few other little spot healing things that I might do to this image and I might make a few more adjustments to the blues up here just to kind of synergize them. It was a tough morning with these clouds, but otherwise that's basically it. You can see how in this video looks like it's going to be about 25 ish minutes long. You can see how we went from here to here. So I've made the image in my opinion, a little bit more compelling. I did a lot of fixes um, and I think it looks pretty good before and after. So especially those shadows, I'm, I'm really a big fan of the shadows more than I was at the start just because there is a little bit more detail in there. So that's basically how I go about editing an image, especially when there's something like this that needs a lot of changes in order to make the image a little bit more compelling. If you've got some average photos out there like this one or ones that you're struggling with, follow some of the like tips or tricks I showed you in this video. Sorry it is so fast paced. I wanted to fit a lot in here. I know there's a lot of you guys out there that enjoy the fast paced style. If you already know how to do the things that I'm doing, the fast pace is nice. If you don't, pause and replay as many times as you need. And again, I will link lots of videos here talking about concepts that I used in this video, but I really hope that was helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If it was helpful, make sure to leave a like and a subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, and we'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. Talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.